Okay, so first of all, in this video, the data set that I will be using is measurements that were made every two minutes in the month of April. In the first method, I'll be using a pivot table, so make sure that you have clicked somewhere inside the data set, and then go to insert and insert a pivot table, and then click OK. Take the date and time and drag it into the rows field. Then take the CO2 and drag it into the values field. Then click on the CO2 and go to value field settings and change it from sum to average and OK. Then click in the column with the date and time in the pivot table and right click and go to group. And instead of grouping by months, we will group by days and hours, and OK. And now we have averages for all of the hours in the month. We'll now change the way this pivot table looks, so go to the Design tab, and remove the subtotals, and remove the grand totals. Then go to Report Layout and change it to Show in Tabular Form. And also change it to Repeat All Item Labels. And now we have all of the dates and the hours laid out the way that we want. We will now pull these values out of the pivot table. So to get the date, I will do equals date value. And then select the date and enter and this will turn it into a proper Excel date. I need to format this, so we will change the number format to a custom format, and I'll select this one here, and OK. Then we have to add on the time, and the hour will be this value here, and then the minutes and the seconds will both be zero and I'll double click to send that formula down. And now we have the date and the hour for all of the hours in the month. And I can just copy the values for the CO2 and paste them next to it. And we no longer need the pivot table. Then for the second method, we'll be using Power Query. So make sure that you have clicked somewhere inside the data set and then go to data and get and transform data from a table slash range. And OK. And this opens up the Power Query editor. Then go to the add column tab and select the date and select date only. And this will separate the date from the time, so we end up with a column that has just the date in it. Then click on the date and time column again, and this time go to time, and extract just the hour. And we get a column with just the hour in it. Then select the date column, and hold down control, and select the hour column as well and go to Transform and Group By. We'll be grouping by the date and the hour, as those were the columns that we selected. The new column name will be Average CO2, the operation will be Average, and then the column that we'll be averaging will be the CO2 column, and OK. And now we have the average CO2 for all of the hours in the month. We can now go to the Home tab and Close and Load. And we get all of this information in a table. For the final method, we will be using a formula. So the first thing I need to do is get the date and the hour from the date and time column. So I'll do this using equals floor.math. This will be the number here, and then the significance will be 1 colon 00 inside quotation marks. 
and this will round it down to the nearest hour. I will copy the formatting from here and then double click to send this formula down. And so now I have a column that has just the date and the hour in it and it doesn't have the minutes or the seconds. Then I'll copy the first value in this column and paste it as values and also paste the formatting and then do equals and select this date and time and we will add on a time to it and we will be adding one hour and then the minutes and the seconds will both be zero. Then I can drag this formula down and it increases by one hour each time as it's always looking in the row above. I will drag this down until I have all of the hours for the whole of the month. Then we will do equals average if. The range will be the column that has the date and the hour in it and we'll press F for to make that an absolute cell reference. Then the criteria will be the cell just next to the formula and the average range will be the column with the CO2 numbers in it. And we'll press F4 to make that an absolute cell reference as well and then enter. Now there's going to be a problem with this. When I send the formula down, I start getting these divide by zero errors. And that is because the time is not quite accurate enough. Even though the date and time look normal, they're actually off by a few milliseconds. So the times in this column are actually different to the ones in this column. In order to fix this, we need to use M round. This here will be the number and then the multiple will be one colon zero zero inside quotation marks. And this will round it to the nearest hour. Now, when I send this formula down, it's not going to look like the date and time are changing, but they are. And we can tell this because the formula is now working. And I have average values for every hour in the month. Okay, so in this video I have shown you how to calculate hourly averages in Excel using three different methods and that is everything.